In this video, we'll be taking a single AI and unleashing it onto the high-speed tracks of Mario Kart. But here's the twist. It won't just race on one track, it's tackling four unique and challenging circuits. This makes things extra tough, as the AI won't have the luxury of tailoring its strategies to any single track, really testing its adaptability and skill. To make things even tougher, our AI will start off knowing absolutely nothing and won't be given any special information about the game, instead solely relying on the screen just like any human would. Also be sure to stick around to the end because we're taking this AI for the ultimate test of its knowledge, unleashing it on a track it's never encountered before to truly gauge the extent of its understanding. But before we dive into all this, let's unveil the secret behind this AI wizardry. What kind of AI can possibly tackle such a monumental task? Well, in the realm of modern AI, neural networks reign supreme. They work their magic by applying millions of seemingly random computations to the input, gradually tweaking these computations until they master the desired task. But neural networks aren't well suited to images, as they tend to look at each pixel individually. It's a bit like trying to understand a painting by examining each tiny brushstroke one at a time, a tedious and far from ideal approach. But behold, there's a game changer, the Convolutional Neural Network, or CNN for short. This network is designed for unraveling the intricate structure of images, allowing it to learn to recognize everything from simple shapes to entire entities like other races. Once the CNN has worked its magic, it passes this knowledge over to its less savvy sidekick, the regular neural network, which is able to translate that visual information into real-time actions, enabling it to actually play Mario Kart. But what's even more fascinating is exactly how it does this. Imagine loads of tiny filters scanning the image, each one seeking to extract unique nuggets of visual information, like a squad of detectives looking for what's important. On screen, you can actually see a visualization of what these filters look like. Now, I'll be honest, I have no clue how these filters are useful in learning to play Mario Kart. But after a total of 120 hours, these are apparently what our AI conjured up in its attempt to master the game. Our AI will have access to just four different actions, including wheeling, drifting left, drifting right, and drifting without a direction. That last one might sound a bit confusing, but it's essentially just drifting at a less sharp angle, with the direction we drift being decided by whatever action was taken previously and is commonly used by good players. Now let's talk about how the AI's behavior is shaped during its Mario Kart adventure. And in reinforcement learning, it's all about rewards. These rewards can be earned in two different ways. Firstly, there's a checkpoint system, a total of 20 checkpoints per lap, scattered across each unique track. Each time the AI hits a checkpoint, it gets a sweet boost to its reward. However, there's a catch. It loses a bit of that reward for every millisecond it takes to reach the checkpoint, giving a clear message, you gotta go fast. Secondly, the AI is given rewards based on its current speed, read directly from the game's memory, again emphasizing how important speed is. Now, I won't bore you with the technical details of how this is actually implemented, but if you really wanna know, just pause the video on the screen now. But anyway, without further ado, it's about time we get into some training. After just one hour of training, our AI is like a young learner struggling to find its footing on all four tracks. It's quite a sight to behold as it wrestles with the basics, even failing to drive in a straight line and opting for a chaotic zigzag pattern instead of a simple, graceful drive forward. When it encounters a corner, well, let's just say it's more of a befuddled whirlwind than a pro Mario Kart player. But at this early stage of training, the AI is like a newborn just trying to grasp the world around it. It's attempting to do what our human eyes effortlessly achieve, like spotting corners and edges in order to avoid obstacles. Beyond that, think about all the knowledge we humans bring to the table. Our innate understanding of motion, gravity, the ins and outs of cars and bikes, and even the simple concept of what a race is. Our AI on the other hand starts off with a blank slate, knowing absolutely nothing, armed only with the images it sees, and it has to figure out which actions will yield the most rewarding results. It's like teaching a toddler to ride a bike from scratch, full of potential, but it's still probably going to be taking a good few falls. After a solid 10 hours of training, our AI isn't quite the Mario Kart champion we envision, but it's come a long way from its stumbling start. Now instead of barely making it past the first corner, it's managing to navigate almost halfway around all of the tracks. But the most crucial takeaway here is the undeniable signs of progress. Because believe me, if it doesn't show this kind of potential at this stage, they tend to, well, let's just say they don't stick around for too long. For now though, our AI is showing good promising growth, and it looks like it's here to stay for a good while longer. 
At the 15 hour mark, our AI is hitting some significant milestones. It's now capable of completing a full lap on two out of the four tracks, specifically Daisy Circuit and SNES Mario Circuit. What really fascinates me though is how that AI holds up against the different tracks. When an AI takes on various courses, it's like a test for difficulty. Humans tend to argue endlessly about which parts of a game are the toughest, often based on personal preferences as it's a very highly subjective matter. But here's where our AI brings an objective perspective to the table. It doesn't possess these personal biases or preference, it simply just learns and adapts. So when it excels on certain tracks while struggling on others, it's a bit like a data-driven indicator of the track's inherent challenge. As we hit the 30 hour mark, our AI is shaping up to be a formidable racer, clinching victory and dominating some races by a landslide. What's truly intriguing though is the reversal of fortune on the tracks it excels at. The AI is able to get its first wins on the tracks it previously struggled with, triumphing the most over Mario Raceway and Mario Circuit. To be completely honest though, I don't actually know which track it won on first, as I don't actually record the entire training process, as this would probably fill up my entire PC. Instead, I save snapshots of the AI every few hours, then load them up to see its progress. This approach might mean occasionally missing a phase that AI goes through, but it's a space-saving lifesaver for my computer. Speaking of space, it's mind-blowing how efficient the AI's neural network is. It occupies a mere 22 megabytes, less than the storage space of a single 4K image, despite its ability to play Mario Kart. Even more impressively, the AI learns by simply modifying itself, not adding anything. So whether it's been training for just an hour or an entire year, it's gonna be using that same 22 megabytes. I decided to train this agent for a massive total of 120 hours or five days straight. At the end of this extensive training marathon, it was crystal clear that our AI had become an absolute maestro on these tracks, knowing every twist and turn inside out. It was a thrilling sight as it consistently secured first place in almost every race, barely making a mistake on any of the four tracks. You might wonder why I fast forwarded from 30 to 120 hours, as that seems like a pretty big jump. But the truth is, after about a day of training, the AI's progress really starts to slow down. And I mean really. The improvements become tiny, nearly imperceptible, unless you zoom out and take in the entire training journey. To drive this point home, let's take a gander at this graph, charting the AI's average reward over the entire training process. In the initial day, it's absolutely soaring skywards, but over the course of the next 100 hours, it's a slow and steady climb, marked by microscopic yet relentless enhancements, ultimately culminating in the AI you see right now. If you've ever read the comments on some of my previous videos, you'll know people have been begging me to take one of these AIs and put it on a track it's never seen before. So here it is. The same AI you saw driving with no extra training on the Luigi circuit. But just as everything was looking great, this AI sadly got to the end of the track but had no idea what to do. This sadly gets worse if I put it on a track that's even more visually different than the tracks it was trained on. For example, on Yoshi Falls, it barely made it past the first corner, but there's more to come. What happens if we take this AI and train it for just a single extra hour on two unseen tracks? You guessed it, our AI is back to stomping the Wii CPUs with no trouble whatsoever. From playing on the previous four tracks, the AI had already learned most of what it needed to know to play on the unseen tracks, like how to detect objects and how the game's driving worked. Despite this, it just needed a little bit of extra training to readjust what it knows to the new tracks. It's a bit like if I made you play your favorite game but switched all the controls around. At first you'd probably fail miserably, as everything just wasn't what you were used to, but after a little bit of practice, you'd just be back to your best in no time.
Anyway, I hope this video made your day just a little bit better and be sure to check out my other videos for more AI content.